We're going to take a quick look at how to estimate a population standard deviation or variance and then how to find an associated confidence interval. First thing is that you need to know a point estimate is a single value that's used to estimate a population parameter. Now the sample variance, which is represented as S squared, is going to be the best point estimate for our population variance, which we represent with sigma squared. Our sample standard deviation, which is just regular S, is our best point estimate for population standard deviation, which is just regular sigma. So here's an example we have. It says a study found that a random sample of 30 men produced a standard deviation of their heights of 2.4 inches. What is the point, the best point estimate for the population standard deviation in the variance? Well, if we look at the first part here, the population standard deviation, our best estimate for the population is equal to our sample. So since S is equal to 2.4 inches, our best estimate for the population standard deviation is also 2.4 inches. Now the variance, we would use S squared. So all I would have to do is take my 2.4 and square it, and that would give me my best estimation for my variance, which ends up being 5.76 inches. Now our point estimates, especially with variance and standard deviation, um, we can't guarantee how accurate they are. So usually what we will do is we will construct a confidence interval. And a confidence interval, it's a range of values that's used to estimate the true value of this particular parameter. To do a confidence interval, we need to know our confidence level, which is the probability that the confidence interval actually contains the particular parameter. And to find our confidence level, we will often take 1 minus alpha to do that. Now, we have three main steps in order to um, find our confidence interval. First thing are the requirements we need to check. So the first requirement is that we have to use a simple random sample. The second requirement, the population must be normally distributed. Now with some of the other confidence intervals we've done, this, um, this requirement isn't quite as strict, but for um, standard deviations and variances, we absolutely must have a normal distribution. Even if our sample is large, we still have to have that normal distribution. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to find our critical values. Now with standard deviations and variances, we're gonna be using a chi-squared distribution so a chi-squared distribution is not a normal distribution. It's actually right skewed. So when we find our critical values, we would have our chi-squared right side value and our chi-squared left side value. Because it's skewed, these are not going to be symmetrical values like they have been for some of our other tests. So we will actually have to, to look up each one individually. Um, you'll need to know how to use the chi-squared table in order to do the rest of this video. So if you do not know that, you will want to go learn that first and then come back and finish this video. Um, another thing, make sure when you're using that chi-squared table, it gives you the cumulative areas to the right. Okay, Some of the tables we've been using in past videos have given us areas to the left. Chi-squared is always the cumulative area to the right. So it's going to be very important that you sketch a picture of your diagram first, put in our information, and then use that to help you find the correct critical value. So if this were my diagram here, my chi-squared right value would be over here, and my chi-squared left value would be over here, the right side and the left side. So once we have those found, now we can come and we can actually compute our confidence interval. And again, because we don't have a symmetric distribution, we have a right skewed distribution, we actually have to calculate each one of these individually. So it says in order to do this, I take n minus 1, well n is my sample size, times that by my variance, or my standard deviation squared, and then divide that by my chi-squared right value. Then to get my upper limit, I would take my sample size minus 1, multiply that by the variance or the standard deviation squared, and divide that by my chi-squared left value. This is in order to do the variance, and notice our symbol in the center is the symbol for the population variance. Now if we need to do the confidence interval for the standard deviation, 
It's the exact same process, but we would just square root each of these values because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the inside component here is still the same as it was above, but we would have to square root each of those values. So let's do a confidence interval for that example we looked at. So the study found that a random sample of 30 men produced a standard deviation of their heights of 2.4 inches. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation and the variance. So um, first thing I need to do is I need to check my two requirements. First requirement says that it's a random sample. Well, the problem states right here that it's a random sample, so we're going to assume that's true. And then the second requirement says that it has to be a normal distribution. Well, heights are normally distributed, so we've got both of those requirements covered. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to go find my critical values on my chi-squared table. So I'm going to start by sketching my curve, and I'm going to put a value on the right side, a value on the left side. It says I need to do a 95% confidence interval. So that's my area in the center here. Now, when I do 1 minus the 0.95, that gives me 0 0.05. So that tells me the total area that's missing. Well, because I have two tails here, I have to cut that in half. And that gives me 0 0.025 for each tail. So now, when I go into my table, if I go in and want to find my chi-squared left value here, I need to look up an area of 0.975 because that's the total area to the right of that particular value. When I go to find my chi-squared right value, I need to look up an area of 0.025 because that's my area to the right of my chi-squared right value. Now, once you get in your table, you also need to know your degrees of freedom. So for ours, we had a sample size, n equals 30. Well, our degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so our degrees of freedom that we would use for this one would be 29. So if you go into your chart and look up your, um, your critical chi-squared values, you should find that your chi-squared left value is 16.047 and your chi-squared right value is 45.722. So these right here are my critical values. Now I can go ahead and do my, um, my formula, my computation. So if I want to do, um, let's do the variance first. So when I do my variance, it says I need to take n minus 1 times s squared. Well, the 2.4 here is just s because it's our standard deviation. So s squared, I need to take 2.4 and I need to square it again. So you have to make sure that you pay very close attention to the values that you have and make sure you use the appropriate ones. Okay, and then I need to divide by my chi-squared right value. So I need to divide by my 45.722. Now when I do that computation all out, I end up getting 3.653. So 3.653, that's my lower limit for my variance. To do my upper limit, I'm going to take my n minus 1 again, times the s squared, but this time I divide by my chi-squared left value, so I divide by this 16.047. When I do that computation, I end up getting 10.409. So right here is the confidence interval for my variance. Make sure you have the correct symbol in the center there. Now, to do my confidence interval for my standard deviation here, I'm not going to redo any of my computations up here. All I need to do is take the square root of my values here, because to get my um, standard deviation, the formula says 
to do the square root of all that. So I need to do the square root of 3.653, which gives me 1.911. I'm technically going to be doing the square root of sigma squared, which just gives me sigma. And then I'm going to do the square root of 10.409, which gives me 3.226. So now I have my confidence interval for my standard deviation. When we interpret our confidence interval, um, usually we're going to use a phrase something like this that says we're 95% confident that the interval from, and then you would insert the appropriate numbers, actually contains the true value of the population variance of the heights of men. Now make sure that if you're doing population variance, you use the values that you computed from the variance. If you need to do the population standard deviation, make sure you use the values for the population standard deviation. One thing we don't do is we don't say that there's a 95% chance that the interval, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So usually this top structure is going to be the way that we interpret our confidence interval. Now stat crunch. Um, we'll do this very quickly for you. You just have to make sure you pay very close attention to the numbers that you enter and then to the information that the question is actually asking. Because in stat crunch, we will go to stat, variance stats, one sample with summary. Once we are here in variance stats, it is going to be working only with variances. So if the problem that you're working with is dealing with standard deviations, you have to make sure that you remember the information you're using is actually your standard deviation squared, and then you have to accommodate for that as you're working through the problem. So let's go ahead and look at our example in StatCrunch. So I have a blank StatCrunch opened up here, and in order to do my confidence interval for standard deviation and variance, I need to go to Stat, and then to Variance Stats. We only had one sample, and we had our information was with a summary. So when I do that, it pops up this box here. And notice this first um, spot here, it asks me for the sample variance. Now in the problem that we were working with, it only gave us our standard deviation of 2.4 inches. So you have to square that value and then put that value in here. So if you put the 2.4, it's not going to give you the right information because that's not our variance. That's our standard deviation. So when we square 2.4, um, we get the 5.76. And then my sample size was 30 men. Then I want to click on the button here that says confidence interval for variance. Make sure that your confidence level is whatever the question is asking for. Ours was a 95%, so we leave it at 0.95. And then I can go ahead and press compute. Now my output here. Notice that this is for the variance only. And it gives me my lower limit of 3.65333. And it gives me my upper limit of 10.409376, which matches really closely to what we got. If the question that you're working on asks you for the confidence interval for the standard deviation as opposed to the variance, you will have to square root each of these numbers to get the correct value because these are for our variance, not for our standard deviation. So you have to be very careful when you are working these problems to make sure that you're putting the right information um, and then also answering with the correct information. Whether it's variance, then you leave the numbers alone here. If it's standard deviation, you would square root each of these numbers here.